Okay, welcome to part one of this series. Um, in this video, we're going to be, well, making the script that I demonstrated in the previous part, because it's a fairly simple, straightforward -ish thing to do. Um, and the first thing I want to do is just briefly explain the folders that we're using, because it's not how I normally do this. Um, so what we're doing is, actually, because we're using sort of a, if you like, normally I have the core folder with all the backend files and all that stuff, we're effectively using a backend file that's sort of included with PHP, if that makes any sense. Um, I'll explain what I mean by that once we get on to the whole extracting thing. Um, so in this part, when, uh, sorry, in this video, or in this project if you like, um, we are not going to be using a core folder, we're just going to be working in this single script, but we are going to be following the conventions that I usually do. So yeah, I just thought I'd sort of say a quick note on that. Um, this test.zip file is just the zip file I meant, uh, used in the previous part to test, um, and that's what we're, what we're going to be using to um, sort of test out the various um, you know, extracting bits of the code and all that. Um, so yeah, that's something that wouldn't normally be there, but is just for the sake of testing. Obviously that would normally come from like the user's computer or whatever. Um, and then this upload.php script is where, what we're going to be concentrating on for the most part of this video. Um, and then again, just this uploads folder, which is currently empty, is just going to be where all of the files are actually extracted to. Right, so with that explained, let's get on with the actual code. So if we just come across to my editor here, uh, you can see that I've just removed all the PHP code and left a bit of the HTML. Um, so this bit here is all you really need to worry about from the HTML part. This is just a very simple sort of file input form. Um, and the only thing you really need to be sort of aware of here is the fact that the one of the input types is set to file. So this just denotes a file upload. And just notice that I've given it the name zip um, and just one thing you do need to remember is that this enc type parameter needs to be set to multipart slash form data as it is here, otherwise it basically won't work. Um, if you don't do that, PHP won't populate the files array. Um, so I'm going to be, like I said, I'm going to be assuming you sort of know how to do file uploads, because I have done a video on that before. Um, so if not, then go back and watch that, I guess. Right, so the first thing we need to do um, is well, we need to process this form submission. So I should probably explain what these two areas are going to be for. At the top up here, we're going to be processing the form data, actually extracting the file. And then down here, we're just going to be showing any error messages that, ac that um, sort of happened or occurred during this bit at the top. OK, so the first thing we need to do in processing the form data is check to see if the file has actually been uploaded. And we're going to do that by checking to see if the element of the files array exists. So we can just do a simple if is set files zip. So the zip here is just the name of the form um, attribute. Sorry, no, it's the name attribute of the f input element. This thing here, attribute type file, uh, the name. So yeah, that's that. <laughs> Let's not get too bogged down in that. Um, so first thing we're going to do is define an errors array, which is just again what we always do. And this is just going to be an array which is going to contain any errors that occur, and then further down, we're going to use the value of this to either to, uh, to display the necessary message. So if this errors array is set uh, but is empty, i.e., it's still like this, um, that means there have been no errors, and we'll just display the success message. If not, we'll just output each error. Right. So first thing we're going to do is check a few error conditions, and the first one is going to be to make sure that the zip file has the extension of .zip. So the way we're going to do this is by taking um, everything after the final dot, full stop, period, whatever you want to call it, in the file name as the file extension and then comparing that to zip. So the way we can get everything after the final dot point um, is using the explode function. So if we just explode using a dot, oops, the name, which is in the files array, so we can just use this, except we type all of it. And what this will do is give us sort of each bit of the file name that is separated by a dot, full stop, whatever. Um, so we want the last one of these, which we can do by passing this result, resulting array into the end function, which just returns the last element of an array. Okay, so then we can just compare that to the string zip. So we can do if that, which is the file extension now, is not equal to zip 
we're going to show an error or really what we'll do is add something to the errors array so what we're going to add is that does not look like a dot zip file okay and there is a slight problem here because if someone uploads a file name with capitals this um, still won't work because PHP won't compare um, well PHP will treat zip as not being equal to zip so that condition there would be true so this error would happen even though it is actually a zip file just with a weird file name so the way we get around this is by converting this file extension that we found into lowercase and then comparing it to the lowercase version so if it's already lowercase the conversion won't do anything but if it is uppercase or it has some uppercase um, then that will be converted to lowercase and the uh, conversion will work as it should so we do that just by wrapping this whole thing in the str to lower function and that just converts a, you know, a string to lowercase okay so that's that one done next thing I'm going to do is check the file size um, I don't normally include this but I just thought I should um, not for padding, not because of that, but um, to just show you how to do it, I guess. So the um, the way we do this is just using the uh, size attribute in the files array. So we can just do, oh, whoops, that should be a capital S there. Anyway, back to back on track. Um, so we do this by just using the size attribute, like I was saying. So we just do files, zip, size. And we can check to see if this is greater than any number, uh, and this is in bytes. So you need to convert what you're probably thinking of, like a number of megabytes, into a string, that's our string, into a number of bytes. Um, so I'm going to be using 100 meg, um, which uh, corresponds to this number here. Uh, and I found that just by Googling 100 MB in bytes. So you can just Google 100 MB in bytes. Or you can work out yourself. It's just multiplied by 1024 um, a few times. 3, 2, I can't remember how many. Wait, I could work it out, but I'll get all bogged down. Right. So if that's greater than that, it's greater than 100 megabytes. So we can just add something to the errors array again, saying um, there is a size limit of 100 MB. Limit and the full stop. Okay, so that's that done. Next thing we're going to do is attempt to open the zip file. And the way we're going to do that is using the zip archive uh, class. So uh, this is what I was talking about earlier. This is like the sort of built-in backend file, if you like, built-in library file. Um, it's not really a good way to describe it, but um, it's sort of the effect that it has. So before we can open the file, we need to create a new zip archive object, which we're going to use to work with our zip files. So just up here underneath the errors array, I'm going to find a new variable called zip and this is going to be equal to a new zip archive you don't pass in any parameters um, that's just how it is and that creates the zip object which you then use to work with various zip files so to open a new zip file we use the uh, uh, open method of our zip object that we've just created so we just do zip open and then the file name is the parameter that this takes um, so because this file has just been uploaded, we know its current location on the server um, in the temp name um, sort of thingy key, that's it. <laughs> uh, so we can get that from the files array. So files zip temp name, like so. And now this will uh, return false if this fails. So another check we can do here to make sure that they have actually uploaded a zip file and not just something that's a bit like a um, well anything but renamed to dot zip um, is to check to see if this is false because we don't want to go and try and extract it if it's not a zip file because that will cause a few errors to appear so what we can do is check to see if this is equal to false then we'll show an error so just add something to the errors array which is going to say um, I don't know what about failed to open zip file okay and then down here we can check to see if the errors array is still empty and like I said, uh, well, like I've said about a hundred times before all that means is that um, none of these conditions have happened because the, su sort of the sort of success condition of each of these error conditions, if that makes sense is to add an error string to the errors array 
So down here, if we check to see if it's empty, like so, that just means that no errors have happened. So to extract the file, really quite simple, all you do is use another object, sorry, another method of the uh, zip archive object, which is zip uh, extract to. And this just takes one parameter, which is the folder you want to extract the files to. So in our case, it's just uploads. Okay. Um, and then after you've extracted all the files, you need to close the zip file, otherwise you'll have an open sort of zip file that you don't need for the rest of the script. So we close it just by using the close method. Okay. So just like a, oh, not vclose. So like I was saying before, that looks right, I think, yep. Like I was saying before, um, this zip archive is sort of similar to something we would define ourselves in one of our sort of files in that ink folder that I always use. Um, so that's why we haven't used a file like a, file, uh, a folder like that for this, just because this is essentially already defined for us. Um, it's also probably worth pointing out that you may not actually have this class available on your server or on your installation. Um, I did by default with my version of PHP, but it may not be the same for you. But if you just go to the php.net website um, for this, you can just search for it in the little bar at the top, zip archive, exactly like that. And it'll come up and there's a section for installation and that goes through how to install it. Okay, so we should be ready to um, pretty much test this out now. Um, but I think actually I will leave that for the next part. Um, actually no, no, we can test it out and we'll deal with error handling in the next part. So this is ready to sort of work except that it won't show any messages because this is where we're going to be showing our um, sort of success message or error messages. Um, but as it is, this code should, fingers crossed, actually upload or move or extract the files. So let's just make sure that our uploads folder is empty, which it is, and let's test it out. Um, so just ignore the fact that I forgot to refresh my browser after the part one, and let's reload that. Then let's browse for our zip file, and we'll just see if it works. So we're uploading the file, still uploading the file, and there we go, that's uploaded no message just because we haven't coded that yet but if we look at our uploads folder you can see that these four files have appeared and these are the contents of the zip file so we'll just delete those because we don't need them really um, because we're going to do some more testing in the next part um, and like I said in the next part we'll deal with handling the errors and also also I'll show you how to get all of the file names that have been uploaded because it's not particularly obvious how to do that okay so thank you for watching and come back for part two where we'll pretty much just finish this off